Children, you are welcome. This is a teacher Bom Jude, the Apostolic Overseer of In Christ Ministries here in Boya, and uh, your host to In Christ Realities. And this program is to make you live the reality of your spiritual life, a supernatural life. So today, we will be talking about the fact that you have been made, you have been accepted, sorry, you have been accepted in Christ Jesus. The fact that you have been accepted. So the topic is, you have been accepted. You have been accepted in Christ. There are many of us out there who we feel rejected. We feel a lot of rejection in our life. We are always looking for how to belong. You are looking for means in which you can incorporate yourself in life. Some, some of you think God is no longer with you. You think God has forsaken you. You think life is no longer treating you the way you, he's supposed to treat you. And because of the mindset that you have, you are living a very, very unfruitful life. You are living a life that is not beneficiary to you. You are living a life full of regrets because you have been made to understand that God is not happy with you. But today I have good news. I have good news for you. To declare to you that you have been accepted in Christ. As far as God is concerned, you have been accepted. And today we want to explain it in details so that you should know how acceptable you are to God. And it is something of the past. That it is something of the past. Where you are right now as a believer in Christ, you have been accepted. God is not in the business of rejecting his own. God is the business of incorporating your own into himself, into his being, into his life, to make you live a supernatural life. So I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to feel your, your, your spirit. I'm here to embolden you with a word of truth that is coming from the, from the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for which he came into this world. He came for your acceptance. acceptance. He came for a reconciliation. He came to give you a befitting life. And maybe all what you are going through is simply because you lack knowledge in this particular aspect. Maybe you have tried so hard on your own. You have tried so hard on your own to be pleasing to God. But you find yourself at one point or the other falling short of what you ought to do. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to, to empower you. I'm here to inform you of the fact that the relationship, between you, the relationship between you and God does not solely depend on you. It depends first on, on God because the Bible tells us very clearly, very clearly, that it is not because we first love. It, it is because he loved us first. So whatever thing that we are doing, we are doing it as a response to the love that heavens has showered on us. So whatever thing that you do, you rely on the grace of God. I want us to go to scripture. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. I want to concentrate on chapter uh, verse 5 and 6. So if you are there with your Bible, open to the book of Ephesians. Make sure you have your notebook to jot down some important things that will help you in life. Ephesians chapter 1. But let me read from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who, which are at Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. <laughs> to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 5 again. Having predestinated us 
unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. So the topic of this discussion is you have been accepted in Christ Jesus. So as I earlier said, it is not what you can do that matters. It is what God did that matters. It is what God did to mankind, to Christ that matters. Why? Because it is not by our works that we are saved, but by the grace of God. Lest any man should boast of his works. It is so that God should take the glory that he created you. So you are so special to God. He's the one who took our time to create you, to make you a new creation so that you can enjoy the fullness of life. So by making you, he accepted you. So there are some things I want us to define. And by defining, defining it, you shall know the reality of yourself. You shall know the reality of yourself. And remember, our justification is free in Christ. Freedom is only in Christ. If Christ does not accept you, it means that you have been rejected. But to the surprise of many, he has accepted all because he says in Titus that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. When we talk about all, we mean all. There is no exception. There is no exception. I don't care the type of life you live. I don't care whatever thing that is happening. As far as God is concerned, you have been accepted. And once you know that you have been accepted, you will be, you will be forced through the love of God in your life to begin to live a godly life. So God does not love you because you can do good. God loves you because of his goodness towards you through Christ Jesus. That's the first thing that mandates you to be loved by God. That's the first thing that mandates God to love you. That he's the one who created you. And he's the one who is showing you love. He's the one who is explaining to you who you are. You cannot know yourself except you know Christ. You cannot know yourself except you know what Christ did for you. You cannot know yourself except the reality that is found in the Bible is explained to you by experts who have taken our time to study the purpose of creation and the coming of Christ. So when we talk about, it says in verse 6 that, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted. When we talk about accepted, what does it mean? Is this something that is just literal? Is this something that is deep? Is this, how do you look at it? Do you just see it like a mental accent, something that because you accept somebody? When we talk about accepted, what does it mean? I want to explain to you to understand that this word accepted goes beyond what you can think or imagine. It goes beyond the love of God that you, 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 you just merely just know. It's something that is so deep that when, once you accept it, you understand that the, you understand the real reason why Christ had to die on the cross, why he was crucified, why he died, why he said it is finished, why he stayed on the grave, in the grave, sorry, for three days and three nights. We will know that he conquered hell on our behalf. So, the word accept, accepted is in Greek, we call it charito. Charito. It means to be engraced. It means you have been given grace. Grace. It means you have been fully favored. It means God, God's love is shining upon you. You have been given some extra powers. You have been given some, some, a special place in the heart of God. To be among the living so that you can, you can show forth the glory of God amongst men. So you have been engraced as far as God is concerned. Another one is that you have been highly favored. To be accepted means that you are favored. Verse 5 tells us that having prayed this needed us to unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself 
according to the good pleasure of his will. You were created for his good pleasure. He is the one who made you. He is the one who made you to be such a person. He is the one who adopted you. Your adoption did not go through the human way of adoption where you take up another person's child and make it yours. It is not going to the orphanage and choosing a child to live with. So, it is different from the way we adopt. Adoption, as far as God is concerned, was making creation, was making matter to become part of him. He made matter in order to dwell in it. That's where you find grace. So the ground in which you have been made of is so holy. You are so special to God. You are so special and favored that he made you and gave you a name. That at the mention of that name, every knee bows. It is not just a male word for us to talk to be, to be happy. We are not just here to make you happy. We are not just here to make you feel excited. We are here to explain the reality of yourself as far as God is concerned. So it is true adoption that you have been called a child of God. He is the one who created you, predestinated, and then he made you, and then he adopted you, and then he highly favored you. It means you have been favored among God's creation, that you are the one that God endures. You are the one that God dwells in you. You are the one that the Holy Spirit finds to be the temple. You are the one who carry the expression of God. You are the one that when we want to witness God, we want to see God, we see you. And that is why we say, we honor the Christ that is in you. We honor the Christ that is in you. So if you don't have respect for a fellow human being, it's because you lack knowledge of the fact that the man that God created, he favored him. The God you can't see is found in another human being. It's not just found in men of God. It's found in human beings. It's found in us. All of us. All of us. So you say you are being highly favored. It means among men you are favored. In this world you are favored. Everywhere you go you are favored. That is what it means to be accepted. It's not something God just do today and then tomorrow he reject. It is something that is, is eternal. Another one means to have a special honor. I don't know what you, you, you understand by honor. The honor in itself is special. But when we add the word special honor, you should know how dignified you were created to be. You should know how to carry yourself wherever you go because God endures you. Because God is in you. You have received special, special honor. In most occasions, we say, oh, we have our guests of honor. It means among every other guest, you have been honored. Amongst other people, you have been singled out to be uh, 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 the person of the day. You are the person, maybe you are given one, you have a special wine. You are given a special place. So when we say honor, what do we mean by honor? Because if you don't understand what we mean by honor, you will see think, the way you think that maybe when I send somebody an invitation and say you are honored to be in our, you just know, okay, they just invited you for, no, 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 no. It is something deeper than that. When we talk about honor, we are talking about added value. Meaning that you are not just created, value was added to you. Most of the times that we dress, we dress, the, the dressing adds value to you or it devalues you. When someone looks at you from a distance, the person either gives you honor or he dishonors you. And most of the time, when we dress, there are some things we put, maybe you dress, you are putting on your bangles, you are putting on your gold rings, you are putting whatever thing you are putting on, is to add value to yourself. So that when you go, people look at you from a different angle. All the dressing we dress is so that we can add value to ourselves. But now it depends on your mentality of what you are wearing. You might add dress in a way because you think you want to add value to yourself, but you devalue yourself. We you see people not valuing you. And you will, you will ask yourself, why am I dishonored amongst men? Why do people run away from me? Why are people despising me? It's because what you were supposed to do as value, add as value to yourself, you did not do it to please, you did it, but it was not pleasing to your viewers. You were not pleasing to those who were to be with you. So he says he has given you a special honor. He has added value to you. It means you have 
made you to become somebody with value. That when we see you, we value you. When we see you as a Christian, we say we honor the Christ that is in you. It means we recognize that there is a value inside of you. That you only takes your spiritual eyes to see. Most of the times when you are seeing one another, you are seeing the person based on the person's deeds. And most especially the misdeeds of the person. We forget to know how spiritual you are supposed to look as such a person. So God has given you, uh, 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 has added value to you. He has made you valuable. He has esteemed you to the highest degree. So if you know how God looks at you, you will know how to comport yourself. If you know how God looks at you, you will know how to move in the society. You will know how valued you are. If you know how he has esteemed you, you will not live a male life. He says, the Bible says, ye are God, but ye die like men. men. Why? Because you are ignorant of who you are. You are in ignorant of who you are in the spirit. You are ignorant of who is in you. You are ignorant of the type of life you're supposed to live. You are instead walking according to the praises of men. And when you fail to, pray, to please them, you tend to think that you are nobody in the society. The Bible comes to tell you, this evening I'm here to explain to you and to inform you of the fact that God highly esteems you. God looks you with a lot of dignity. He has dignified you. So you say you have been made accepted in the beloved. It means that you have been esteemed. You have been esteemed to the highest degree. Human beings are the only creation that when you see, you, 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 you wonder the mysteries of God. That even at death, people still have respect for humans. Why? There is something that is in that man. There is something that is in that woman. There is something that is in humanity that makes, them, makes you to be respected. Even, when, even at the point of death, people still give you respect. They honor you even at death. That's why we see always all about the last honor. Let us give the last honor. Yes, you are going for burial. The person has become trash, but yet, when you look at the person's face, you see, see something. There's a mystery behind it. There's a mystery behind it. So you are not just a male human being. You have been accepted. You, have been, you are highly favored. You have, you have value. You have been dignified. You are so precious. You are dignity itself. If you have all these values and they are embedded into your mind, they are embedded into your spirit, they are embedded into your soul, then you will not live a male life. You won't live a male life. You will not live a male life. So he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. There is some out, someone out there, you will feel rejected. You feel like the whole world is crumbling against you. You feel like you are nobody. You feel not valued. I'm here to explain that the glory of God that is in you has added value to you and people look at you with another perspective. People look at you with respect. People look at you with dignity. People look at you like somebody that has value. You have meaning in life. He said it was for the good pleasure of God that he created. So you are created for the good pleasure of God. And what's supposed to keep you going is the thoughts of God towards you. Not the thoughts of men towards you. Men might, might downgrade you. But if you know who you are in the spirit, then you will live a very high and dignified life. You will live a very high and dignified life. You will live a life that is worth it. You add, you add value to society. You have been accepted. Don't look at your mistakes. Don't look at your sins. Don't look at all those negative things that put you down. Look at what God sees you. He predestinated you. He adopted you. He made you acceptable in Christ. It was for his good pleasure. Wherever you are right now, when God looks at you, he smiles. And says, wow, what a beauty that I created. He will look at you and say, wow, so this is my daughter. This is my son. Oh, God is proud of himself that he created you and you are the way you are. That's the first thing that comes to your mind. That's the first thing that's supposed to embolden you. That's the first thing that makes you, when you are moving around the streets, we move with a lot of dignity in you. Why? Because you know who that is in you. For greater is he that is in you 
than in he that is in the world. You have become the temple of the Holy Ghost. That is who you are. That's how God looks at you. Don't look at you differently from what the Bible says. Don't look at yourself differently from what the gospel tells you. It is what the gospel tells you that makes that, that has meaning. It is what the gospel tells you that has meaning. It is what the gospel tells you that has meaning. Let, let us look at this scripture before we go for prayers. Uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verse 24. Being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He said, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance, forbearance of God. When the Bible says, being justified, what is justification? What is justification? What is justification? What does it mean to be justified? The word justified is in Greek is dikaio, which means to render just. Which means to render innocent. Which means to be made righteous. For you to be just, for you to be innocent, for you to be righteous, does not depend on you. Yes, you. It doesn't depend on you. I know you have been taught that you need to be righteous. You need to make yourself righteous. You need to do righteous things. Yes, it's good. It's good to live the righteous life as, as the human, the society prescribes. But the righteousness that is of God does not depend on you. For Christ has become unto us wisdom, righteousness. He has become unto us redemption. So when we say you have been accepted, and you hear it, and you are thinking of how your life is, and the moment you feel like, no, no, this thing cannot be true. When the gospel comes, it comes to make you feel that what is being spoken of cannot be true. It's too simple to be true. It's almost too good to be true. That you have been justified freely, somebody will say, no, it's not true. I need to repent. I need to do restitution. I need to ask for forgiveness. I need to do this. I need to do that so that God may love you. There is absolutely nothing that you can do for God to love you. There is absolutely nothing. Before you were created, he had already loved you. Before you were created, he has already accepted you. He said from your mother's womb, I knew you. And he said the plans I have for you, they are not the plans of evil, evil but are the plans of good things. He gave you the authority and said, before you will call, I will answer. He knew that your human actions would not be perfect. But he has chosen and said, being justified, it means you have been rendered just. Whatever thing that you have, been, you have done that is bad, in Christ Jesus, you have been rendered just. You have been made innocent. Innocent means you are not guilty. You are not guilty. It means you are not guilty. You are not guilty. You say you have been you, are, you, you have been made righteous. So the righteousness is not of yourself. The righteousness is of God. The righteousness does not depend on you. The righteousness depends on God. The righteousness does not depend on you. Your being just, your being innocent depends on God. So as far as you are in Christ Jesus, you have been rendered just. You have been made righteous. You have been made innocent. Paul said, I have espoused you as a chaste virgin. That's the Corinthian church we are talking about. The church that was full of all type of evil, but he said, I am, uh, uh, we have rendered you, we have, we have espoused you as chaste virgins, as virgins. 
So as far as you are in Christ, you are a virgin. You are innocent. You are not guilty of anything. So when we say you have been accepted, all these attributes come in. You're being just, you're being innocent, you're being righteous come into play. And all of these things do not depend on you. It depends on our good Lord. It depends on our righteous God. It depends on him who created you and called you to be his own. It depends on him who called you out and said, wow, this is the person that I had in mind. So in actual reality, he has come to fulfillment and, and he's happy. He's happy with you. God is happy with you. Yes, you may do things like that wrong. He will only chasten you. He will chasten you. He will chase He's there to correct you. He's there to rebuke you. So you have been rendered just. You have been rendered just. Say, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein you have been, been accepted. You have been accepted in the beloved. I'm here to tell you, God loves you the way you are. Your response will only add some value to yourself. You can only respond to the love of God. You can only respond to the love of God. You can only respond to the, the love of God. So it doesn't depend on you. So wherever you are, I want you to text your messages. I want you to give me SMSs. I want you to WhatsApp. I want you to call so that we can pray together. If you have any situation that is hard, as hard as what? There is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. There is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Remember, you are honored. You have a special honor. You have added value. You have become somebody with value. You are not useless. You are not useless. You are not useless. You are not useless. You have been justi justified. You are a person of dignity. You are someone who is so precious. You are someone who is so precious. You are someone who is so precious. Wherever you are, I want you to examine your thoughts. I want you to examine your mind. I want you to examine yourself and see whether you can accept that God has accepted you the way you are. To see whether God has accepted you the way you are. And you live in that reality. And once you enter into that reality, you are living a life that is fulfilled. You are living a fulfilled life according to the desire of God, according to the will of God for you, is that you should find yourself accepted. Let your mind accept it. Let your spirit accept it. Let every part of your being accept this truth that you have been accepted. You have been accepted. You have been engraced. You have been highly favored. You have special honor. You have been engraced with special honor. That is who you are. That is the good news for you today. That is the good news for you today. Receive this truth and make sure that your life does not change. So we want to thank you. We'll be right back after the jiggle.